ex-footballer, silly, dumbass model. <laughs> I know I'm being unreasonable, but I don't give a fuck. Why aren't you a big horny porn star? I literally went to London for a wank. <laughs> Do you think of the colour of that front door? More importantly, what's the glasses about? <laughs> well, I just... It's just another look. <laughs> Trying to bring a degree of... An air of sophistication to the podcast this week, Abigail. Yeah, exactly. It's just another look. I like, I'm enjoying it. I don't need an excuse for Celine. No. Sexy secretary. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going for. No, because I think this week I want to tackle some... Serious topics. Oh, so what? You put the bins on? on serious topics? <laughs> Celine's? <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, I haven't got any. So what do you think about the front door colour anyway? It's a nice blue. P it's not blue. It's blue. <laughs> it's grey. <laughs> we started, have we? <laughs> I know, but it's just... You just do me out with that. It's, it's what grey. I don't understand. It's, I think it's blue. You think it's, you think it's grey. That's fine. It's called slate grey. It's not called slate grey. It's not <laughs> slight bluey grey. No slate. <laughs> oh, not slight grey. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Slate you should actually grey. wear these glasses. <laughs> Bloody go and look at the front door now. Oh, let's see. You see them? Clark Kent. Clark Kent vibes. You look like Clop. Do I? Yeah, I can Clop. Clop. <laughs> Plop. <laughs> Says the Evertonian over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, Clop's a ledge. But enough, you talk about him enough on your own pod. Been a busy week as usual. I've been, um, I'm still on me emptying of the house vibes. I'm on me third skip. <laughs> <laughs> I emptied the dish, the dishwasher. I emptied the garage um, with the worst cold of my life. I managed to fill a whole skip of junk that I've had in there for eight years and never been in there. So I figured I didn't need any of it. And I feel my mind just feels so clear and... It just makes me very happy. Uh, I had I got one issue that I wanted to raise. Um, I went in the office earlier and I brought it with me. I was going to surprise you with this. You surprised me when I walked into the office. <laughs> um, you're printing. So obviously you've got a net of port of return, which is, I don't know if anyone else is um, involved in this, but these net of port returns are like, she buys 4,000 things on net port and then returns 3,999 of them <laughs> every week. What is the Why? I mean, just select what you would like to have. Well, it's hard with an online shop because you need to try it. Like, I'm the same with Zara or any online shop. You have to try it on, and if it doesn't fit or doesn't suit you, you send it back. But you shouldn't complain. Yeah, no, but I just don't understand. I don't understand why, you, why there's so much activity in and out. <laughs> uh, should we talk about your activity on tootall.com? <laughs> <laughs> Pete found this website. Great site. Um, he's never been able to get a pair of tracky bottoms. To fit him and he found this too tall I think he did a photo shoot and one of the stylists on it had some items from this too tall .com or whatever it's called lank lanky as fuck .com. <laughs> <laughs> too tall actually for the uh, more the, the, the longer gentleman um, so lanky bastard so he keeps buying himself all these trackies off there and he absolutely loves them he's come down in an outfit every day hands in pockets big smile on his face yeah re reasonably but the, priced but the difference is all the stuff that doesn't fit you you keep which is just totally that's not true a total waste these trousers that I'm sporting today too tall okay but anyway, back to the point. On the net support of return, mm -hmm. um, I, I found, obviously, I know you're not very good at printing, so I'm, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt here. But on the return was Zlatan Ibrahimovic. <laughs> I know. Right? I know. On the net support of return. I know. I, I, I literally... Why? Well, when I saw that, I had a heart attack. I didn't even know who it was for a start. I thought it was some, like, criminal mugshot. And I, I, if you give me... I, I've only just worked out how to print anyway. Um, on the phone and you click on it mm. and you click print and whatever. So feeling like super proud of myself for that. But that came on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I'll give you the benefit of doubt only because it's got it's a little bit of, of what I was, something I was working on. And I don't know, you've mixed the two. But it does look strange that there was Is lots it? of other photos on there and there's only Zlatan that's made it onto the <laughs> net and port. He's a bit Viking, isn't he? Please? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, joking. He is as well. I've got no idea how that Christ. worked. But then, obviously, I couldn't put that in the box. So we ran out of paper. So we had we had no paper. So I had to use card. 
Yeah, is that why? So I went to print something like a contract today, and um, it was it was all on card. I know it looks so like, expensive. Like I was thinking, God, my God, must be some contract. That <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah, I needed me. a quill that to was like me. sign it. No what idea. What the hell is going on? So you're putting card into because we're out of paper. You're putting card into the into the printer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, we need help in this household. Yeah, we do. But you look so studious today. Thank you. Do you look beautiful to say? Thanks. Yeah, so do they you. suit you those glasses. Straight out the awesome collection. Mm. <laughs> yeah. nice. I love the fact that we you, you're going. I'm, I've got serious debate today, so I'm going to put the glasses on. I like that. Mm. I feel like we always start our pod with a, a little wine at each other. Yeah, but like you say, stuff that we've been building up that we might not, you know, I haven't sort of got round to, to mentioning to you. We sit down together and we oh, get things off our chest. I've got one more wine. I, I've actually got an apology. Oh, the what? Yeah. Looking forward to this. So, last night when you were ignoring my calls. Yeah, working. And my messages. Working. <laughs> messages. I, um, I watched the second episode of that thing we were watching. Why, punishment. But why do you always do this? Like, why? Why would you do? Well, because I wasn't answering my phone. You just you want you're gonna just watch the series that we're into. Yeah, let me take it back to the previous night. Mm -hmm. So I I've been ill for the past few days, like dying of a cold, and I'm never ill. And you know, when I'm running the house, shit gets done. Let's just put it out there. Let's just be real. Mm -hmm. The kids are fed. They sit down with manners. Eat all the dinner. The homework's done, capital letters and full stops, no spelling mistakes. House, before I go to bed, spotless. So I'm in bed, come down. The homework's half, half arse done. Not one capital letter in sight. Million spelling mistakes, no full stops. The house looked like we'd been ransacked and there was just food all over the table and like sweet wrappers. And P Pete's answer is, Lighten up. They're having a good time. So I obviously lost my shit. And I was like, you just can't do a, a simple task. Because when Pete's at work, I've got four kids. I need... Started a bit... with an apology. I'm, this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, but I need to say Is this it. an apology? Yeah, it is an apology. The apology comes next. So... Obviously, when Pete's at work at night, I need a bit of structure and routine in the house. I need the kids to uh, do what they're told. And they still have fun. I play, I play catch in the bath for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's, it's this game that we play in the kids, like before bath time. We have to run around the whole house with them naked and catch them and get them in the bath. <laughs> Not all of us, just the, just the kids. Yeah, sorry, just the kids. Before they get in the bath, they're running around the house and we have to catch them put them in the bath but it goes on for hours because they they're like one caught. more chance you can't catch me get get liberty get johnny whatever so we had a fun time but it, it's just like the one time i've just said Pete, can you please stick to the routine and help me out and you know the, the, on the previous page from the homework it was like liberty please remember your full stops and capital letters like you can't even be asked to read the That's, comments it's not true so my way of teaching the kids is to let them, them no is to let them make to do their own homework so if i'm doing them obviously there'll be there'll be capital letters there'll be full stop there'll be commas there'll be so basically you're doing their homework so what i'm doing is i'm allowing them to express themselves and i'm mentioning to her uh, do you think you've got enough uh, capital letters in there? Do you think you've got enough full stops? Well, you obviously and forgot they to say yes, that. No, I've said all that. And then they go, yeah, I think. And then they go, right, so that goes in. And that is genuinely their homework. And the teacher will then say, you've not done this, you've not done that. And they're learning. Whereas if you go, do this, do that, do that, they're just getting delicate. They're not learning. Then They're actually becoming more lazy. But I've actually got a real <laughs> issue with people's perception of us you know, like we went to the blessing of the pets the other day. But you're saying blessing of the pets like everyone's goes to blessing of the pets. Do you want to explain what that is? Okay, so blessing of the pets is something that our school does annually. And I think it's a lovely tradition where all the kids bring their pets in and bless the pets from, I think it's St. Francis or something. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing. But so there was like a horse there. There's, and a, like, there's it was an cats, alpaca. There's an like alpaca. Cats, guinea it was pigs. Mad, wasn't it? It was amazing. It was absolutely gorgeous. So our dog... Out of hundreds of dogs, it's the only dog that's arsing about. We're getting judged at this point. Look at them. Ex-footballer, 
silly dumbass model. <laughs> did you not have your glasses on? Can't even. Con- no, I didn't have the glasses. <laughs> can't even control the dog. So for me, when that I perception, when I arrived, that though, perception. But when of, I arrived, how did the dog behave? Yeah, because you're his master. Because that's because you undermine me. Because my house. discipline. Is better than your discipline. No, because you undermine me in no, the house. No, in front all, of no, no. I just come in and I said, Jeffrey, sit. Bang, he sits by me. Good as gold. No, but that thing when when I'm saying, Pete, please do this and let's not argue in front of the kids because then you undermine my authority. No, my you do it to the dog as well. I, it's two different. Like I, I, I disagree sometimes with your parenting, and you disagree with mine. But I feel like if you if you constantly telling them not to do things, you know, they end up not listening. Whereas if I once in a while say, no, stop that, they stop. Because I don't say it often, so they know they're in trouble. So then that is the actually a much better way of parenting. Okay. So... You can Joe over there. When, when, when I'm on nanny. my own... When I'm on my Girl own... super nanny. Oh, when I'm on my own, there's absolutely no issues. When you're on your own, there's no issues. It's there's carnage. no issues when you're not here either. Thank you. That's not true because yeah, you because... call me constantly, going, "Oh, these won't do what they're told. It's you. It's you." And I'm going, "Well, it's not me because when they're with me, not a problem." Quite your a whole approach is just do what you want. Hands off. Hands, Hands off. off. Hands on. It's yeah. Fr- my it, give them freedom and rein it in when it becomes too much. It's, it's all about give and take. Let them play. It says you. You can't do one thing. Like what? Anything you couldn't, I, I, I don't do actually know how you. I said to you this morning, I don't even know how you. So, went to the bakery. This is, oh, this is quote, yeah. quote, <laughs> quote <laughs> start this pilot. Like, quote this is the of intro. The century. <laughs> quote of the century, right? So, I said, Oh, Pete, we need to stop and um, get the boys some sandwiches to do this pod. Why are you looking at me like that? Just waiting, waiting for your. Um, so I said, Oh, great idea. I said, We need um, bread anyway. So, standing at the till at this point, the girl goes, do you need anything else? And he goes, no. I'm like, Pete, I've just said to you one second ago, we need bread. And he went, who goes to the bakery to buy bread? (laughs) That's what he said. He was like, I thought we were going to go to Tesco on the way home. I'm like, we're in a bloody bakery. Like, seriously? (laughs) I was thinking about other things, you know what I mean? But like... She, but we don't often go to the bakery. And she says, what kind of shop is it? And I said, well, it's a bread shop. This is so, what I'm dealing with. He's thick. God, I'll be a feel for you there. Yeah. So, fuck, you're not even getting a fucking No, that, that, obviously, I was, that was, not even getting a fucking Who bargain. goes to the bakery to buy bread? I we like, don't normally what? buy our bread from the bakery. I do. When? I, when let's go in there and see how many, apart from today, the last time... Uh, sour, that bread, sourdough thing. That no one eats. The one that no one eats. I, I eat it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you do. Kids hate it. All of it. They like the white bread or the brown bread from from Tesco. Warburton's. Warburton's, right? Toasty. Mm-hmm. So in my defence, I just assumed we get the bread that we get always. Mm-hmm. So, Even like, the always... woman looked at me like, you have to deal with this? Yeah, because she wants to sell another loaf of bread. She's going, you know, oh, he's so stupid, you should always get it from the bakery. Support local businesses. Yeah, which is a great idea, but we always go to Tesco and get it. So why for this particular situation, we have to get it from the bakery. And now you're going, oh, you're so stupid. But we always get our bread from Tesco. I'm loving this. We've come out all guns blazing today. <laughs> I know. No and what mess, is this? No messing around. Obviously some pelt up anger. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I feel like it's good to express these frustrations, though, in a, in a safe zone. It, that's for, no, it's, it's nice, it's it's just, nice to get off it's, your chest. It's just hurtful, Ross, to be honest. What's hurtful about Knowing it? Knowing that everything that comes out your mouth is completely irrelevant. <laughs> the bathroom? What about the no bathroom? No one cares about your bathroom, is what you said. I, I'm constantly getting bombarded with bathrooms Pete, and Pete bread. just um, prefer to, like, you know, we've had the tap. The tap hasn't worked for two years. Mm-hmm. And we can't get a bath in our bathroom because when you lift the tap up, the whole... <laughs> that's another thing. Oh, here we go. So, here we we go. should just... This should just be the hate each other episode. Get, getting things off your chest episode. Get, getting things well, off let's just change, change it. Forget about, we were going to talk about pregnancy today. <laughs> Pie that, get it off your chest. So Pete, I'm like, Pete, there's, so bearing in mind there's tape on the bath. So no one, so everyone knows not to use the tap because if you lift the tap up, water squirts out everywhere and the whole bathroom is flooded. Hence the flood uh, in the ceiling. So I come home. 
Pete's lying in the bath. <laughs> and there's basically ducks swimming in our bathroom because it's also a swimming pool. And I'm like, are you insane? And so now the tiles like need replacing. And he's going mad about Scrooge. He's going mad about um, we need to fix the bathroom. So he'd happily just use one tap for the rest of his life, never get a bath again. So the one tap doesn't work. We've got another one, okay? Mm -hmm. So do we need to then do redo the entire bathroom at great expense? So then also you want to change like the, the tiles into, the, into marble. So, so f because one tap doesn't work... We have to rejig the entire bathroom. Can't you just buy a new tap? Can't you just put a B&Q or something? Good question, Ross. No, because it's um, <laughs> because of all the damp underneath the tiles. The tiles are lifting, so they uh, need to be replaced. Okay. And the tiles that we've currently got are discontinued, so that's what I need to get. She thinks I'm stupid. Do you know, like, like she, she, the way she says, oh, you're so thick and stupid. Like, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get an entire new bathroom because there's a slight leak on the tap. Like, it, I just think, like, no one goes in that bathroom. I, I know, like, it's nice no to have a nice bathroom. bathroom. Me and you. Yeah, but that's like saying there's it's no not... point in having a bed because no, no one no. goes in it. We've got a nice bathroom and we've got a tap that works. Moving on. Pregnancy. Hit me. Again, do you no, want it? No, don't. Actually. <laughs> no more babies. Oh, God. That was exhausting. No, you know what? It's nice to get things <laughs> off your chest. Like, you know, I, I, I don't appreciate the, you know, the personal <clears throat> insults, but I, I like the fact that we, you know, get to talk about this stuff. And I feel better, and I'm sure you do. You look like you've got a lot off your chest there. <laughs> I do. Yeah. But you do know that I love you. I love you do, yeah. And all these ridiculous things about, yeah, are the things that I love, really. <laughs> oh. Isn't that so lovely? Yeah. God. No, I, I think that this is like a big part of the podcast. I think getting stuff off your chest, like um, you know, you having a wine, me and having a wine, um, could be a feature. Of this, mm. um, you know, the weekly wine club. That's a good one. Yes, but wine with a H. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So we make a feature about it. You have a wine, I'll have a wine, and we'll get it off our chest. And then what we do is cheers. We'll have a sip, and it's gone. That's amazing. I actually love that. As you guys are aware, we've been together 15 years at uh, 16 years actually we've been fortunate and blessed enough to have four beautiful kids and i think on this episode we're gonna focus on pregnancy and having kids and you know diving a little bit deeper into that journey yes yeah, so we've previously talked about um courting we've talked about our early dates meeting uh obviously our, you know progression was getting engaged and having children, starting a family. Um, and, uh, you know, we were quite early on, I suppose. We weren't quite married yet, were we, when we were trying for a baby, which seemed mad. And it took ages. We thought you, you would sort of come off the pill or whatever, and then we would just have a baby. And it mm. didn't quite work out like that. It took a while, didn't it? I think it, it's a funny thing. You know, <clears throat> people, well, girls spend so much time trying not to get pregnant. And then they come off the pill and think it's going to happen instantly. But for us, that wasn't the case. Um, we were we were like over two years yeah. trying for Sophia. But looking back, I actually think there was a bit of God's plan in there. Because I'm, I'm not, probably weren't I'm ready. not an overly religious person, but things do happen at the right time when they're supposed to. We 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 were, we were trying for two years. God, I was must have been like twenty two. God, if my 22-year-old daughter was trying for a baby, I'd be like, you're mad, live your life, you know, enjoy yourself. It, it was a scary time, like every month and doing, you know, like coming on your period and re that realisation that you're not pregnant and then, you know, worry started to kick in. Will I ever get pregnant? Is there a problem? Mm -hmm. So we obviously went to the doctor, had some tests. I had the um, my bloods done. I had that dye through my tubes. He said all that was fine. Still no pregnancy. So after about a year and a half of that, or longer, the do doctor decided to go in with a camera, didn't he? And mm -hmm. I had the operation went in my, in my belly button and he discovered that I did have endometriosis, which is this thing I, I hadn't even heard about. And so with endometriosis, it can actually cause a scar tissue in your tubes, which can stop you getting pregnant. So that diagnosis is actually really scary. Mm. So when I found out I did have that, I was like, oh my God. I had the operation and the operation was a success and... A couple of months later, we were pregnant with Sophia. Mm, yeah. And it just felt like 
a miracle, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And like, like I say, it's weird. Us sitting here now with with four children, and it's like it came easy to us, but it, did, it didn't at all, did it? It was mm. the first one was was tough, and we, it was a rocky road. Yeah. Um, but obviously, we we felt we were so blessed with Sophia, mm. and then um, you know after that, it became a little bit easier, didn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I think these kind of issues with pregnancy, a, a lot of people don't really talk about them. I think it's out of fear embarrassment because uh, you know as a woman I think you just expected to be able to get to get pregnant and to give birth and it's you know because it is a natural thing and the human body the female human body is designed to to have a baby mm. and give birth it's almost you know taken for granted that you it should be easy but it's not mm. it's a traumatic time for so many women and you know I had so many problems in my pregnancy I was literally ill for nine months my hair was falling out like ridiculous I had acne remember that rash I had mm. like all over my whole body yeah, like literally everywhere. like a tin of bean it, like the mad <laughs> takes this whole doesn't it it's like it's like a natural thing so you think oh you know I, every woman should it's hard oh my god it's, it's hard. so hard and you know when you can't control your hormones a thing that Pete thought I made up by the way yeah, Pete but there's, there's, I made there's not being hormones. able to control your hormones, and then there's like whatever you were Take, <laughs> taking the biscuit a bit. <laughs> yeah, but you can't. Come on. You can't control Come on, it. though. Like seriously, you know when she had the baby, every single one of them. Like I mean, it was it was hard <laughs> for both of us. And then when the baby came out, it felt like the Green Mile. You know when he breathes out and all the badness goes away. <laughs> Nice. It was literally like that. I the green bar when he when he like he takes all the top and he goes. <gasps> it's like the baby came out and out of a sort of vagina, like all this bad energy just left the room, and then she was just up again. And I was like, God, I love I love you. That's nice. Isn't it? This is coming from a man who has a cold for two days and thinks he's gonna die, and he's like in the worst mood for that forty eight hours. That's not true. Imagine having like car sickness. I know it's hard. I know it is. For nine is. months, 24 hours It's incredibly hours a day. hard, I know. And the, the, <clears throat> the morning sickness for me, oh my God. And what kicked it off was deodorant. Every morning, this vile human <laughs> would get a shower and spray deodorant. And that would be it then for the day. And I would be vomiting my guts. It wasn't up. every morning. And I he'd be like, like oh God, I'm so sorry, I forgot. It's hard to be in a good mood when you feel like that because it, it's like a mixed emotion because you don't want to feel like sad or angry or overwhelmed or almost hate the pregnancy in a way because you you know, you're, you're so lucky and it's a gift and you, you should be so grateful. Like I've had friends who have absolutely loved every second of their pregnancy and they've loved everything, but I was so ill. Pete, wasn't I? Yeah, no, you were, and I, I felt for you. But like, it was little things. Like you, you'd say to me, um, oh, "No, I'm being unreasonable, but I don't give a fuck." <laughs> and like, what as a man? I like, didn't say you that. You did. And what? What as a man? Like, what do you? What do I say to that? Do I? I just sort of walked out and, and like lift your tears, okay? No worries. Or or do you? That try was another and... thing. He'd, he'd think just leaving me in the bed and shutting the door and basically locking me in. But do you, do you go in? It's like me. it was like the Exorcist room, you know. Like you go in and like you know I, I, something was going on in there that I didn't understand, and I was like, "Whoa, well, I, how do I deal with this? How do I cope with this?" Like I, I, I didn't know what to do. Like you're literally insane. <laughs> is, is this when you picked up golf? <laughs> it certainly was. I, I signed I for Burnley. Most of the, the last ham- pregnancy, was, I signed for Burnley, and I went, I went up to live up there. Uh, I was in the hotel for like the last the last bit of it. I didn't want to leave you, but I knew you had a good support network around you. And I felt like I was just antagonizing you, you know, doing things wrong all just the time. Just by breathing? Yeah. You know, like, it's, that's the thing that, like, there's lots of men out there. I know that obviously, you know, we have to we have to go, you being pregnant and giving birth is an amazing thing. But for men, it's hard as well. Like, obviously, knowing here is hard. I'm not saying that. But... There are there's men out there. Please get in touch. Like, How would you deal with that? Like, I think you've just gone from the nation's biggest sweetheart to the UK's most hated man <laughs> with that comment. 
Yeah, but there was also men that would actually go, yeah, I get it. Like, there, there's men out there that go, yeah, my yeah, wife But you was can't like, sleep. You wean every two seconds. You're I throwing know, up. Your I hair's know, falling but what, can I, what on... do I do? What, what I'm saying is, what do I do about that? Well, what, do as some a research. Me? No, but what, me, you what do I do? You told me that I made I, up I hormones. I didn't say that. You I'm, did? <laughs> I'm going, but listen to me. Oh, why aren't you a big horny porn star like me? Because I'm not made up of um, <laughs> testosterone. I'm like overdosing <laughs> on estrogen right now. And the thought of that will makes me want to die. Do you know what I mean? You can't control your body. Well, you know, I can't control mine either. I mean, God. mine's, of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you are. No, I mean, testosterone is obviously a thing, isn't it? You know what I mean, obviously, like, I've looked into hormones since, and, and you know, they are they are a thing. My doctor was appalled when you said that to me. What, what did I say? That I've invented the word hormone and it doesn't that's exist and I'm just I, mental. All I could, all I was hearing. But the, the good, the, the good side of it is, you know, at the end of it, you get this amazing gift, and I can't complain because even though my pregnancies were so bad, and I'm not being dramatic because I am not like a sickly person, and I feel like I've got a high pain threshold and can deal with m most things. But God, I struggled. I really and and it's all all the things that you 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 know you don't even realize like the bloody piles and you know bleeding through your pregnancy it's terrifying you know what's normal what's not you know oh the nine months worrying is my baby gonna be okay you know it, there's a lot of pressure on a woman yeah but you were brilliant through that especially like, when you've been trying for so long to get pregnant mm. you feel like you're responsible for this thing inside you and anything you do could affect the baby or mm. you know yeah, I can't no. explain no but you were you were incredible through that obviously you know, we are joking you were it was a bit you were a bit mad but that's fine the hormones were, were kicking in I don't blame you for that I totally agree with that but you were you were incredible at giving birth and you're an incredible mother as well thank you yeah. How did you find breaking it to, you, to your friends and family when you were pregnant for the first time? Do you know what? This sounds really immature of me. But the, the weirdest thing for me telling our parents was it's kind of admitting you've had sex. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was so embarrassed telling me dad because then I was just thinking my dad's going to like picture us having sex or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you've done, you've had sex with my daughter. Uh, we've been together like what six, five, six years then. Mm. Telling our friends and family, I was just the main thing was admitting that you'd mm. had sex. I just thought it was a weird. But thing. I, don't you think like like a lot of that got taken away from us? You know, to remember you. Oh my uh, god! There, there yeah. was a story in the newspaper about um about like you'd have been you'd have told you told someone someone had overheard you. I, I our our pregnancy actually got leaked to the press, and it was. I hadn't told my I hadn't told my family or my friends. Really? Yeah. And uh obviously it was still it was before the three month scan. And it was before you... the twelve weeks and you know, because of the struggles we'd had to get pregnant in the first place, I felt I felt very protective over this. And, you know, I wanted to wait for the three months and the scans and make sure everything was okay before we actually revealed it. Yeah, so I went for lunch with my friend, a really cl close friend, and told him, and someone overheard us and sold it to the press. So it was leaked in that way, which is kind of disappointing, really, because, uh, like, I don't think you'd even told your mum and dad, yeah? No, I, I hadn't told my family, yeah. So, like, when that comes out, obviously, like, oh, my God, like, uh, that uh, my first born child, like, that, that sort of pride or that emotion or has sort of been taken away from me, really. Um, There's quite quite sad yeah, yeah no, you never get that back as your first child it's like you want to no. you want to be the one to serve everyone sure. and see everyone's faces and yeah it was sort of taken away um i know you t you told a few people like your mum and stuff like that and but i hadn't told anyone you know i was waiting for a three-month scan before i told everyone and it was it was taken from us a bit god i actually intrigued. feel like i've got morning sickness now talking about this you better not have you know i've got um <laughs> i've got this outfit that i wore when i was pregnant it's just like a long sleeve black long sleeve black top and black leggings. When I see it, I actually get morning sickness. Oh god, it's you, so weird. You did look amazing pregnant, though. Like from the back, you you wouldn't know she was pregnant. Yeah, but that, <laughs> that's such a weird comment that everyone but, says. But because you've got like a little bump, like from the back, the you don't look pregnant. No shit, the fucking bumps. No, in the but front. sometimes people, you, sometimes you can tell someone's pregnant from the back. You can. 
what I'm saying, what I'm trying to try to pay you a nice compliment there and say that you looked like a supermodel from the back still. Oh God, I didn't feel like one. It was, um, but I, I did love being pregnant. It's such a, it's such a miracle. Do you want to tell everyone about your cravings and, and the goblin pie incident? So for some reason, this was actually post horse meat scandal. I just there wanted cheap meat. I just wanted to eat cheap meat. So in, in, in um, Liverpool, when I was little, I used to get these things called goblin pies from Home and Bargain. And they're about 20p. And <laughs> I needed one. So, so bad. So we drove around about 14 shops one day. And these goblin pies were nowhere to be found to the point where we did research to the factory. I rang, I rang the factory where they were made. And Scotland, what, wasn't it? And what did they say? Do you remember? I rang them. They'd been discontinued. They don't make them anymore because the packaging costs more than the product. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think I cried for about two just, days. Like she was inconsolable about it. Like couldn't she was devastated. I just need, I could taste it in my mouth mm. that I just needed this goblin pie. And I, I couldn't even make it because it was basically like cat food <laughs> in a tin, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. So then I went on to the um, the one pound shepherd's pie. Yeah, what about the sausages? No, the one pound shepherd's pie. So I was like, Pete, can you go out and get me one? He came back with a bloody Tesco's finest <laughs> um, ribeye steak, sh sliced ribeye steak, <clears throat> bloody shepherd's pie. And I wanted to kill him. <laughs> it's a common theme here, isn't it? And, and, and also, there's, a, there's another time where she said, I need a prawn sandwich. Prawn mayo. Right, so it's prawn mayo. And I don't know if you know, I think if you've been into Marks and Spencers, there's one that says, the world's greatest prawn sandwich, right? So I went, fantastic, like that. There's, there's not one better. <laughs> She's going to absolutely love this. Do you remember? Yeah. She went we ape at the shit. Day. She went absolutely ape shit. She was like, what's this? And you just wanted the Bang average, like, prawn yeah. sandwich, didn't you? I was so upset when he got me this um, Tesco's finest shepherd's pie. I was thinking, I, I genuinely had sincere thoughts of, how can I have a baby with this person? And he can't even get me a, a one pound. She said, she say things to me like, you don't even know me. <laughs> God, it's a, it's a shepherd's pie. <laughs> you know, it's a prawn sandwich. What is going on? It's got prawns in it. It's got it's all these relevant ingredients. It, it's it, just, it, it was just, you needed it to be real basic. Looking back, I, I was completely irrational. And th these no things... No shit, Sherlock. These, <laughs> these things... We're getting these, somewhere. These, these things got me so upset. Like, I couldn't believe that he'd get the best shepherd's pie that you can get. I'd be like, what is wrong with him? Why can't he just get a but normal Do you not see it from, from my point I of do. view? I, I go, totally like, do. my girl deserves the best. I totally I'm going to get her the best shepherd's pie we can get. And totally. then I come back to, to this... Lunatic, yes, <laughs> that she can't marry me <laughs> because she just because I don't even know her, <laughs> yeah. And, he, and then he got, and then it was Christmas, Sophia was due in the March, and for Christmas, he got me a purple baby bag, purple, purple baby bag, and a blue blanket. Bearing in mind, we didn't know the sex of the baby, it was maroon, actually, oh, maroon. Wasn't and purple. I was like, it was very in color in uh, 2011, and, and again. The tears came. I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, what, what she, she, kind of man? That was Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah. Was um, she cried on Christmas Day because <laughs> I got her from her, her maroon baby bag. I thought it was quite nice because you got little sections for like the bottles and things like that. Every baby bag has that, Pete. Yeah, but I, yeah. I thought it was a nice one. Do you know what I mean? And then also the... Straight um, the bin. The, what was the other thing I got you? Oh, you did get me that gorgeous... Um, book with all our scans in and all the photos and we did like a kind of you know it's so funny when you have your first baby every second is documented i i had a diary i i wrote how i felt each day my cravings um by the time the fourth one's come we're like have we got any milk in <laughs> you know do you know what i mean even it's when he was born little chap when he was born like we we like we, we're going in every single hour to check on Sophia on the, f the first baby. Every single hour? We, 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 every second? We wrote down, like, how much, um, when baby changes were, what times they what were. What colour the poo was? The, what was colour? it hard? Was it soft? Remember, we wrote all of it how down. How many mills, how many burps she did. 
Literally every time, and the, and the timings of them. So in the morning we go, oh look, you know, you know. Or I, I'd say to her, look, I did all this through the night while you were sleeping. <laughs> 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 and then, um, I'm actually leaving then, this podcast. I was absolutely painted out. Wait, hold on a minute. Complete psychopath. You're joking. You're the, absolutely abusing me. Abusing the me. The funny thing is, we actually <laughs> do not fight ever in real life, and we come on here and literally Get paint off each other. Uh, what else was going to say there? Yeah, so then by the end, by, by the fourth one, it was literally like, because obviously we had Johnny in our bed and thought, if we get another one in, we need to be militant with this like, operation. So we're like, right, you're in your own room, uh, but from birth, bang, he's in there. He wasn't in from birth for well, six months. You know, like obviously. We had two we, cots. We had, we had a bit in our, in our room for a bit, but then obviously we have to get him out. So when it was six months probably, we had yeah. to get him in there. Get him in there. And it was like, you know, we'll see you in the morning. And uh, <laughs> and he's the best one now, you know. Like he sleeps well. Like you don't have to push your foot around them. No, That's my parent and advice. It's it's so true. Like with them, um, obviously Johnny was supposed to be our last baby. I had I had my two girls, then I had my little prince, and everything was complete and perfect. So I wasn't in a rush. I'm quite. I'm not. <sighs> I don't really follow the rules when it comes to parenting. I, I probably do everything wrong. You know, I have them in my bed. I uh, have them with me 24 hours a day. They're in our room till they're about three. You know, we go against what you're supposed to do, don't we? You know, get them in the room after two months. Yeah, but that. I love spending time with the kids, don't we? we I like having them in the, in the bed. You I, know? I, I like giving so, them cuddles. So, it's nice. So when, John, when Jack was born... Johnny was one and still in our room. And then obviously he had like separation anxiety. We couldn't get him out the room and have Jack in. So for about six months, we had two cots in our room and one would wake the other one up and then the other one would wake the other one up. So we we literally survived on zero sleep, was, didn't we, for six months. Crazy. So in the end, Pete was like, I've had enough of this. We'll have to put one of them in their own room. And it had to be Jack because Johnny was so attached to me. Um. And yeah, he has turned out to be the best one. Well, he's just he's more independent, isn't he? He's like... Yeah. But with, with Sophia, like, you know, for the, the the thoughtful presence, like we documented the journey, we bought a Polaroid camera. We'd have a Polaroid picture for every month of the bear, of the pregnancy. We had a cast made of your belly, you know, as <laughs> yeah. it was growing. I, I, I took pictures <laughs> constantly of, 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 the, of the bump growing. By Jack, we were like, you just crack on, I'm going to burn no, <laughs> I'd be like that with, with, pregnant with Sophia wake up in the middle of the night Pete I really feel like a McFlurry and Pete like drive to like a 24 hour McDonald's two hours away and bring me one back and um, with Jack wouldn't even make me a cup of tea <laughs> literally no, you were a psychotic bitch that's why <laughs> what the hell how was it still playing football at the time? I enjoyed playing football, I'll be honest, around that time. And, uh, you know, I love having kids. I love it. I, but, but, like, pregnancies, obviously, I try to be there as much as I can. We are joking. But having that kind of release, like, of playing football was a big factor for me. Like, were you going in, like, tackling everyone because oh, you were, like, just so, so like, Yeah, it was, just, it was just so nice. Like, I always think football in general, like, it's such an amazing thing to, like, take your mind if you've got problems, you just go and you just go to a different place and you concentrate on winning a game or training and just, it's like exercise is good, like mental health wise, isn't it? It's like you just go out and you just free your mind. Mm. Well, that, you know, was sort of a that great... That was your release. Yeah, it was a great, great release for me. I know you don't get that being do a pregnant get it. woman. No, I do, I do get it looking back. No, but you don't know what I'm saying is you don't get the... You know, that, that release, yeah, which is part of the problem because, you know, you, if you're feeling so ill, you don't want to go out and then you don't have that, you know, it's just it's just good to get out, isn't you know, it? That, that actually is a really good point. Actually, be, it is easy to fall into a depression, mm. you know, when because especially if you're, for me, I'm like a get up and go person every day. I am not, I literally don't out, sit then. down until I go to bed at night. Mm -hmm. Like that's genuine. To not be able to do things, yeah, basic everyday things, you would, it would just make you feel shit and low. And then you'd have the guilt that you should be, you should be the happiest person on earth right now. You're having a baby. It is a weird thing that it does to you, isn't it? It is a weird thing. Mm. So I got induced with all my pregnancies. People just expect women to be able to give birth and without any problems and it's plain sailing. Giving birth is traumatic on the body and the mind <clears throat> and you're so caught up in that, you know, you have to be grateful, even though you are. 
it's so hard and so mm. many people, myself included, have had a hard time giving birth and it's, it's terrifying. And, you know, I've got friends who are left mentally scarred by their experience. Um, but It's also... not easy with, with Pete playing football and that risk <coughs> of him being away. I know some footballers wives whose husbands have missed the birth because they've gone into labour naturally the husband's been away and he's missed the birth so I was petrified of that happening so I planned a date to get induced and we've made like a little ritual of it haven't we with all the kids it's kind of been like our little thing we'd stay in a hotel the night before because we'd have to be in the hospital like 7am and we videoed the whole thing and documented and what amazing yeah, we made a video of like the dinner the night before. We'd stay in the same hotel every time. We'd have the the, the breakfast, um, and I'd film Ab's feelings throughout the whole um, day, really. And then we obviously filmed the birth, and then we filmed coming home and seeing the family. And it, they're really special memories. And like looking back, I mean, even now Ab gets it out like regularly. We have dinner parties or we have people round. Um, the birth goes straight on, you and we've got and Pete's home movies. We, yeah, yeah, standard, honestly. And we've got like quite a big screen. It's a bit of a cinema screen, and um, well, just for anyone who wants to just wander in, you know, with a pina see colada, big, huge vagina, and, vagina in HD. Rengola. For anyone who wants to see it, yeah, you're not shy, are you? No, it's not that. Like, I think I'm so proud of it, and I don't see it as oh god, there's a head coming out of a swollen vagina. <laughs> I don't see that. I just see this is just a beautiful miracle that's taken place and something, you know, you've done, you've got, had so many achievements in your life, like winning the World Cup or the Champions League or whatever you've done. Yeah, I re- those were great days, those um, winning, winning the World Cup. But for <laughs> me, it's, that's my biggest achievement, being a mum and yeah. to be, fortunate enough to do yeah that's great but it's just so funny when like you see like you know some of the the dads you know from the school in the kitchen and some of the mums are in the in the sort of tv room and uh you see one of the dads just wondering oh what are my wife's up to and then they go in there and you see them come out go whoa (laughs) it's intense in there as it didn't didn't someone describe it as watching your a man once described as watching their favorite pub burn down yeah Yeah, it's been described as that before. I didn't see it as that at all, actually. I like, I didn't for one moment think, oh my God, like, <laughs> you know, that, that, anything like that. I thought it was a beautiful thing. Like, I didn't, I didn't see it like that at all. For me, even to this day, the most calmest moment of my entire life was bringing Sophia home from the hospital to the house. You know, mm. that's always my go-to memory of if I'm feeling anxious or need to be calm that's the that's the moment i think of yeah it's it, that's a time. really really calm calm place where you bring a new baby into a household and you've because you've cleaned it you've made it so perfect you've got a little crib in the corner it's just an innocent beautiful thing isn't it yeah it just it just makes you realize that like nothing else matters just that and now you've got you know you've got the responsibility for the rest of your life looking after this little thing that you love mm. and that you've made and, you know. and I, I just liked having Ab back again, you know, like wherever that was, pregnant was gone, and <laughs> and and you were back, which was lovely. I think we should just go a bit rogue here. I wanted to read some of these nice stories that girls have sent me in. So I put um, a thing up on my Instagram saying, "Tell me your pregnancy stories," and I was actually expecting a lot of like jokey ones and saying, "My husband's useless; he fainted in the bloody theatre." There were a few of those. No, but it was actually quite quite deep. And, you know, I, I really respect some of these women for opening up to me because it is a funny taboo subject, I think. And this one really resonated with me. She said, hi, getting pregnant was really difficult for us. I came off the pill early in 2020, stupidly expecting to fall pregnant right away. A few months passed and nothing. When we were approaching a year of trying, we decided to get blood tests done and my partner had a sperm check. Waiting for those results was horrific, but everything came back normal which I was so re- relieved at at one hand, but the other hand was so confused as to why we hadn't fallen pregnant yet. And then I went for a HSG procedure where they placed dye in my fallopian tubes, which is what I had, to see if they were blocked. I really thought this was the answer, but again, everything came back clear, just like me. But detailing with unexplained fertility is pretty torturous. 
more months passed and I started to think this is never going to happen. And imagine my life without children was really difficult. I was depressed. I cried every day and just getting through every day was a challenge. I spoke with my fertility specialist and explained how endometriosis ran in my family. My mum had it and I actually, and actually struggled to have me for, for a few years. The doctor didn't believe me. And he didn't think I had it. And I, as I had no symptoms, no pain, and I had regular parents. But the only way to rule this out was through surgery. So basically the camera in the, in the tummy. But she was told to consider the risk too. My partner was quite opposed to me having the surgery. But deep down, I knew something had to be wrong. So I went ahead. To my huge surprise, they found stage three endometriosis. The endo was found in a few places and in both of my ovaries. This was a huge blow. And I thought my dream of having children would, could really be over now. Thankfully... The surgery was a success and they were able to remove the endometriosis, but there was no cure and it can come back. The doctor said the best chance of getting pregnant would be in the next six months. My surgery was in the August and I got a positive pregnancy test in early November. It was the best day of my life. The surgery worked and I couldn't believe it. I took seven or eight more tests over the weekend just for reassurance. And then a couple of days later, one of the tests said not pregnant. And about five minutes after that test, I started to bleed. It was a chemical pregnancy. What? Sad, isn't it? Something I'd never heard before. My depression got a lot worse after this and my partner could see the positive side of it. The fact that we actually got pregnant for the first time, but I couldn't. I was filled with negativity. We hoped for a Christmas miracle and that didn't happen. We had been on the IVF list for a few months and, I, and there was a huge backlog due to COVID, but things had started to progress. We had a couple of initial Zoom appointments and my first baseline scan was in mid-February. But just before the appointment on Valentine's this year, I had another po positive pregnancy test. Rather than happy tears and jumping up and down with joy like my first positive pregnancy test, I was numb. And I was sure the same thing was going to happen. I definitely lost the plot a bit here and I took up to 10 pregnancy tests each day for weeks just to see that line progress. I had to call the IVF centre to let them know whether I would attend the baseline scan. In my head, I didn't want to be taken off the list because I was sure I was going to lose this pregnancy again. But they changed it to a pregnancy scan. And in early March, at around six weeks pregnant, we saw the heartbeat for the first time. And it was the most surreal experience of my life. Fast forward a lot of anxiety and quite a few private scans later. I'm over 38 weeks pregnant and due to have my little boy very soon. It still doesn't seem real as I sit here uncomfortable with a heartburn and I can feel him moving all the time. My pregnancy journey has been very straightforward. No sickness, pretty good up until the last few weeks, which I suppose is normal when you get to this side, but my heart truly breaks for people who struggle with infertility. I've never felt so low in my life. Without that surgery, I've never got there. But it does make me wonder how other women struggling to get pregnant have silent endometriosis. Endometriosis with no signs, symptoms, but, they're it, but it's there and it's impacting their fertility, but can also be treat, treated. God, that's lovely, isn't it? Lovely story, but it's it kind of I know I can feel what she. It's a similar journey to ours. Mm -hmm. but She's I just, really going through it there. You know, she's obviously desperate to get pregnant and thinks it can't happen, and she's got a, a gift there. It's yeah, like it's happening. I just think it's a it's a it's a you know a heartbreaking story, but with an amazing ending. Yeah, loads of people get in touch. This is obviously a subject that means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah, one girl, one girl who um, wrote to us said it was actually felt like therapy getting this off her chest, which I thought, well, that's God, nice. perfect. You know, if, if I've been there to listen to someone, that's good. Um, what did you we'll say? read that one out. After nine years of being single and terrible at dating, I was about to turn 35, so decided to go it alone. Sperm donor and IVF and currently 29 weeks pregnant with a baby girl. Oh, amazing. That's nice, isn't it? That's great, yeah. yeah. I've got, well, I've got one here from Dixie, uh, different time, but uh, <laughs> one that I quite enjoyed. <laughs> She said, uh, cried wolf so many times on my third pregnancy, so the midwives didn't come out for six hours. The husband was out and I couldn't get a hold of him. By the time the midwives came, it was too late to go to hospital and I ended up giving birth <gasps> on some green sheet the midwife's husband had used for fishing. Oh my God. In front of my two kids who were watching Power Rangers. So she gave birth in front of her two kids while watching while they were watching Power Rangers. When the placenta came out, my son fainted because he thought it was an alien. <laughs> He was four. Oh, God. That is a weird thing, no? The placenta. Oh, my God. We can laugh about it now, but I bet she wasn't laughing at the time. No. <laughs> Two kids watching Power Rangers. She's giving birth on a green sheet. No. It was, that must have been terrifying. Oh, my I, God. I only, so when I was having Liberty, Pete decided to get a double hernia operation the week before. 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was supposed to be a routine um, hernia operation, double hernia, wasn't it? Yeah. And I had the mesh put in and uh, I, got, I got infected and there was like one in a hundred thousand, what, a million chance, wasn't there, yeah. of, of that. I think there's only one person that the doctor had operated on and it was a basketball player in the US. Maybe it's a tall thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got infected. I'm not joking. My whole hernia was out here. It was red raw and it was, and I was like, so much pain. But whilst I was obviously in the bed waiting to give birth, he was in a bed next to me. And all the nurses were just like flocking around. Do you want a cup of tea, Pete? You okay? <laughs> I was furious. And then, no, yeah. I was getting really well looked after and I was like, I'm pregnant here. Are you joking? It's I know. Idiots just had a groin operation. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. So the, the next day I come out of the hospital and Pete actually got admitted into hospital then. Because he was so ill, do you remember? Oh my God, it was like my temperature went through the roof. It was the infection was so, taking over my whole body, wasn't it? Yeah, it was... I was in such a bad way. It was so bad, but he's calling me. Can you bring me a charger in? I'm like, sorry, let me just wipe this blood off me and I will bring you a charger into the hospital. You know... <laughs> You're making me out to be a monster here. I, I, you were coming to the hospital anyway. And I said, would you mind grabbing me a charger on the way I'd through? I've only just got out of hospital myself. <laughs> but you were coming to the hospital. I'm saying. Yeah, because I didn't want to leave you. Well, I'm not dragging you to the hospital. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a complete monster. I might not understand hormones, but that's you know uh, that was that wasn't my finest moment. How I, I, did you? I, like, uh... I'm lying in the bed next to you know I should be there, <laughs> dabbing her for brow, but instead I was like in absolute bits next to her. Do, how did you feel when you saw your baby for the first time? No, I don't think you can ever explain the, no. the feeling. Yeah, it's something that... What was the first one? And we laugh about it. We always say, oh, you know, God, these kids are like... They make your life a hell of a lot harder. But it's the, it is the best thing in the world. You can't deny that. Mm. Like, I, it's the, it's my, I absolutely love it. I you do. don't know sort of love like it, do you? No. It's special, isn't it? It's so special. It is incredible. Um... But I still think that, you know, I I didn't have a clue what I was doing, you know. Uh, so I, I, I think I should sort of come in around sort of two and a half, three. <laughs> two and a half, three. Yeah. See, I'm an, I just love newborns. But you love newborns, They're just yeah. my favourite thing. I remember when we had Sophia and I said, I, I give Peter baby groans. Like, can you put, um, can you put this on the baby? He put it over the outfit. She already had on. Oh, <laughs> Could you actually... Believe did that, that? Did that happen, or are you just saying that for like effect? Do I actually do did that? Do that? <laughs> he put it over the outfits that she already had on, and I was just like, That's "What not true. the I hell?" I don't believe that. It. I swear on your life, it's true. It was in the Cotswolds. I had a tough time in the Cotswolds, didn't I? Yeah, he also <laughs> nearly left her in the restaurant. She's in the in the the car seat on the on the floor next to the chair, and we were like, "I didn't have a clue what I was doing. No clue, like." You grew up around, you love babies. Well, I, I've come from a big family, so I've like literally brought my brother and sister no, up because I was so much older than them. And I just love anything baby. Like it's my favourite thing. But Pete, oh, no it, clue. I remember we'd go to like, let's go on a day out and he'd have one job. I'd pack the bag, I'd get everything ready and then we'd dry it. I remember we went to this like country fair one time and it was like an hour and a half away. And then I had to feed the baby. Where's the bag, Pete? The bag's on the front step of the house. <laughs> and I just, I, I just couldn't believe it. How oh, you could be so dopey. But you, joking aside, you are literally the best dad. Thank you. You are. I think I'm pretty good. Yeah. I enjoy it. I, I love it. Like, no matter what, when they come in first thing in the morning, like, I'm up straight away, you know, like, I am up with them. I love taking them places and I love spending time with them. It's, it's, it's the best. Mm. This is a quite a funny one because I've been here as well. I went to my midwife's appointment and she asked me if I'd done a urine sample. When I said no, she said, oh, can you do one? So she said, she stupidly squeezed slightly to see if she could do a wait and ended up wetting herself in the waiting room. <laughs> no, oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's from Charlotte. That's a mad one. You know, like where you've got to test your sperm. That's a mad day out. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you bloody loved her. Here's a poor mag and a little cup. No, I literally on. went to London for a wank. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring Pete? the incredible gulk? No, but you know what I mean. Like I said, like, I've just, like a woman behind a desk and you go like... they what go. you mean there's a woman behind the desk? What I'm saying is like, they say to you, like go in that r room... You know, obviously we had that problem like not getting pregnant at the start. Also, oh, knowing full well, she knows that you're having a wank in there. It's so weird. Like, then you come out and go like, a bit, a bit flustered. <laughs> <laughs> Repulsive. <laughs> 
But what you know, we're all like being open. If we're being open, like you know, about female activities, then I think that, for, that I should tell you about you know what what we have to go through. So, did you feel under pressure doing that? Felt a bit strange. I mean, queuing up, there's a there's a couple of men in front of me and stuff. Like, it's, you're like, all looking at each other I'm like, going like, oh my god, how weird is this? Like, we're in a waiting room as if we're at the dentist. A wanking room. Oh. <laughs> Remember you saying you've got to have, you could remember you're saying it like so formal, like you've got to do that um, sperm sample today. It did make me feel a bit weird, to be honest. Remember, you've got to do that sperm sample today. Okay, I hopped on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Spring in your step. Yeah, got, the, got, the, got there four hours early. <laughs> Desperate to get there. Is it just the one sample you need? <laughs> I know, but it's well, I'm like... sure if that one works, I've done three others. <laughs> yeah, but I know that it wouldn't have been from a picture of me either, so that would have been weird. Picture of Jet from the Gladiator. <laughs> well, I've got another one here, Av. Hi, Abby and Pete. My beautiful girlfriend is pregnant. Everything is going great, apart from the fact that there is a dark cloud hanging over my unborn child's head. My wife announced last week she moved, wants to move closer to her family home so that she feels she has more support and have her family around her when the baby is born. I get that. She's from Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> He's put it like, like in bold there. Uh, we currently live in London, and I know at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, um, the pints will be half price. When you're sat drinking them alone, I can guarantee they'll be half the fun. Uh -huh. Please help me find the answer, or I may not be around to see my boy take his first steps. I'm only joking, but please help me. Uh, Lee, 28, from London, not Blackpool. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, well, a lot of your friends have moved from London to like Coventry or yeah, they've Chester. Chester. Um, ones in Birmingham. Yeah, they've, they've all dotted around. They couldn't really afford London. Uh, they had a family, and they realised that they could get a you know a, a nice family home elsewhere. Yeah, but also that I, I think naturally, well, this has happened to me and my friends. Naturally, you gravitate towards the woman side of the family when you have a baby because the girl wants to be with their mom. I think. Yeah, I suppose if you know if the husband's out working quite a lot and the wife's at home, she needs a support network around her. I, I do get that mm. totally. But again, you know, if if you if your life's in London, it's hard it's hard to uproot that life. But you do have to make sacrifices, unfortunately, when when you have a baby. Um, and maybe that do sacrifices. You? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Do you I've made plenty of sacrifices? Like for what? <sighs> like moving your family down to where I live. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. <laughs> ah, okay. Right. <laughs> oh, All God. right, well, do you know what? I've had a really enjoyable therapy session today. Um, I, I feel like you've got a lot off your chest. You're smiling again. Um, <laughs> you've obviously had a lot to get off your chest today. That start got a bit hairy, didn't it? But I feel like it's, you know, the benefit of us. But also the pregnancy stories are really heartwarming some of them and some of them you know it's hard for people and it's been you know they've been through such a roller coaster and everyone's got a different story and different journey it's nice so um, if you haven't had a chance to like email in or get in touch uh, please get in touch because we'll we'll talk about this again we'll have a little segment maybe in the next one mm -hmm. and talk about people's stories because they're interesting aren't they yeah i literally got hundreds of messages today and i just feel so honored that people are opening up to me in such a with such you know some traumatic stories and painful stories there and, mm. you know, I've replied to them. I've replied to them all and the girls are like, God, it feels like therapy writing it down. Like, that means mm. so much to me. Like, not that I can do anything to help them, but, you know, just knowing that someone out there is going through the same thing as you or been through the same and you can open it. Because there is still a taboo about all of mm. this kind of stuff. Yeah, and this is obviously a very light-hearted podcast and we try to have fun with it. We're trying to sort of take you, you know, away from um, real life. But like, this is, when you hear people's stories, um, you know, about pregnancy, about the trials and tribulations of and it all. And their struggles. Like, yeah, it's quite nice to hear that. I it, think it it's a bit of feel, a gear change. Yeah, it is a gear change and it makes you feel so grateful, doesn't mm. it, for what you've got and, yeah. and lucky and... And there'll be thousands of people out there, you know, with stories of not being able to to get pregnant and, you know, how they cope with that and how they dealt with that because that might be able to help other people that can't, you know, mm. have babies. It's not be on end all, you know, like, yeah, obviously we're blessed that we've got that, we wanted that, but there'll be some people out there that really struggle and can't do that uh, and they can get in touch as well. 
you know, we're always here to listen. I, I, I think, you know, real life stories is a major part of this podcast and it, it's what makes it. So please get in touch on thetherapycrouch.com or our socials and we're here to listen. 